Hi there, it's Martin from Lingo. I'm really excited to tell you all about Stylistics Masterclass, which is my brand new online course. If you're interested in stylistics and the linguistic analysis of text, especially literary text, then this is the course for you. I use systemic functional grammar, although you don't have to have any prior knowledge of systemic functional grammar to successfully complete the course. Now the course is hosted on academia.edu, which is a social networking platform for academics and researchers. So if you don't have an account, uh, click on the link below and you'll be prompted to create an account for free. However, if you want to access the Stylistics Masterclass course, you would need to upgrade to premium. So here's a little preview from my course. I hope you enjoy it. Again, if you're interested in linguistics and you want to learn how to analyze text using systemic functional linguistics, then please check out my course. I hope you'll love it. Thanks, and we'll see you soon. All right, let's jump straight into this then. In this video, I'm looking only at the ideational meanings. And when I analyze text for the ideational meaning, I usually start with the process because that gives me a good idea of what the clause is about. So in A1, the process is come. That's a material process because it's a process of doing. You'll remember from the videos that the doer of a material process is called actor. And we have some circumstantial information about time, that's every nine years, and location, into the house. On to clause A2, you notice that so and that do not have ideational meaning, that's why they grade out. The process is can free, I can free them, that's also a process of doing, so that's material. Again, the doer of a material process is the actor. And you'll remember from previous videos that the participant which is affected by the material process is called the goal. In this case, it's them. The remaining element is circumstantial information. Now let's talk about the results of the ideational analysis. You can see that I have separate tabs at the bottom of my spreadsheet. I find that that's really helpful for me when I'm doing my research. Now when we're thinking about the text from the ideational perspective, the process types are a good place to start. So I counted all of the process types and created a little table that you can see here in the top of my sheet. So you can see that I have material, mental, relational attributive, relational identifying, and existential processes. Of course, there are other types of processes, but these are the only ones that are represented in the extract that we've been studying. In the next column, I have put the raw number of instances of each process type. With the total number of processes at the bottom. In the next column to the right, I have the rough percentages of each of those process types. The percentages are not exact, that's because I've rounded them to the nearest whole number. But really, all you need in this kind of analysis are some rough and ready figures. They don't have to be perfectly accurate. It also seems to me that despite the predominance of material processes in this text, it's really the mental processes which stick with us and which have the most significance in the story. This tendency in literature to focus on consciousness and to get inside the mind of a character is really typical of modernist literature. So in some ways we could argue that this story is a modernist text. There are also, in my opinion, some very postmodern things about this text, but I won't talk too much about those in these videos. You can read my paper if you'd like to know my opinions about that. 